Hello everyone, I am Josh and welcome to this Sims 3 house building video. So today I am here building a house in The Sims 3 and since it is nearly Christmas, um, it's late December, I thought I would make a holiday inspired house um, that gets your Sims in the holiday spirit. So uh, this house ended up being quite a bit larger than I expected it to be, um, hence this being a two-part uh, house build. So after watching this, I really hope that you check out part two. Uh, there will be a link in the description below and an annotation at the end of this video. So I hope that you'll check that out. Um, so this house ends up having five bedrooms and I think four bathrooms, I'm not sure, four and a half, whatever, I don't know how many bathrooms it has, but it is a very interesting house, and it did indeed take me quite a long time to build it, um, that's why it's in two parts. So, yeah, so, as you can see here, I'm experimenting with an angled part of the house, which is interesting, and it's also going to be a, um, a walkout basement, and the driveway will go under the house, and the garage will be in the basement level too, which is pretty cool. And I'm really happy with the way with the way it turned out. Although there was quite a few issues I had with constra constrained floor elevation, um, so yeah, that's one reason it took me so long to build this house. I was constantly messing around with the um, terrain and stuff, so you'll see that. But in the end, it turns out really nicely, and I'm really happy with the final result. And one reason I really like The Sims 3 is just because of how cool you can make houses look with the terrain and everything. So it turned out really nicely. And right here you can see I'm putting on the second floor and um, a few columns. I was going to put some columns in, but I decided to work on the roof. So yeah, I ended up making the front of the house and, um, well, both parts of the front. Um, what I mean by that is these two areas where I'm putting this A-frame roof. I ended up making them both way too big. Uh, so as you can see here, it's like ridiculous, ridiculously large and it just looked really bad, so I decided not to do this, and I will make it a little bit smaller, um, so you'll see that, because it just looked way too big, especially that part of the roof, it just was too massive, so um, that was just a slight miscalculation by me, and especially this part here uh, in the front where I think it's like eight wide there or something, it just looked way off, and as you can see here, it's way too big, so um, I didn't make such a large roof because it just looked ridiculous, so I will tone it down a bit in a second, but in the end, it looks really cool with the two A-frames, um, so it looks really nice. And this house is actually quite a bit bigger inside than it looks from the front because it goes back pretty far, um, especially because of the living room, which you'll see is pretty cool. And here you can see I'm just making the house a little bit narrower because I made it way too wide, and it just looked- the roof just was overpowering it, so you can see here I'm correcting that issue, and it looks quite a bit better. Uh, and also, I will fix it on the other side too. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, the living room turns out really nicely. It has a two-story ceiling, which you'll see, uh, which is pretty cool. And it's just a really cool house in general. Um, like, one thing I find with my houses in The Sims 3 is that they seem to have a lot of character. Uh, like, I don't know. Like, they just, like, are kind of weirder shapes. And especially the terrain editing, like I said earlier, just makes it look so cool. Uh, as you'll see when I put in the driveway and like the way that kind of dips down under the house and the way the house kind of is built up on the hill with some stairs that go up to it, it just looks really neat. Uh, and like that variation of the terrain just like helps make it unique, I guess. Uh, so you can see here, putting in the roof, um, uh, well I narrowed this part and now I'm putting in the roof again. And as you can see, it looks quite a bit better now. Uh, quite a bit less ridiculous, that's for sure. So I'm doing that here, and I'm messing around with this roof a few times. Uh, it took me a little while to get it just right, uh, so yeah. But I get it in the end uh, right there, I think I've done. Uh, well, not quite, hold on. And I'm almost done with this little piece of roof here. There we go, I think that's it. So that's those two bits of roof on the front, which were a little bit challenging. And here I'm putting in the um, divot in the ground where I'm going to be putting the driveway. So you can see I'm just making sure it's the right height. Um, I end up just using stairs in the end because that just works out a lot better. Uh, so, you know, that uh, solved the problem and I got the correct height. So you can see I'm like really messing around with the terrain and making it quite a bit, not quite a bit, but um, a little lower in the front. Um, so the front yard's a little lower than street level and then it kind of slopes up to the house. It makes the house look like it's a little bit higher up than it actually is. Um, which I kind of like. It, it's similar to my um, fall Sims 3 house build, the um, Autumn Heights house, uh, which was also built on a hill, which was pretty cool. 
Um, and that's kind of what I did here too, uh, with the underground garage that kind of um, is underneath the house, which is pretty cool. So anyhow, here I'm just fixing up some stuff. There's the basement, uh, which I just put in. So we have a nice basement level there. And there I'm just adding in the area where the door will be so your sims can walk out of the basement uh, into the backyard, which is kind of cool. Um, it, it just definitely adds a multi-level aspect to it, especially when you see the house from behind. You know, it just looks really much more unique. Uh, so, yeah. Anyhow, you can see I'm putting the roof on the front, and I didn't really want uh, the house, well, the second floor to be visible from the front of the house, except for the two parts with the A-frame roof. But, you know, it just kind of didn't work out, so I end up abandoning that idea, and I do make the, front, the second floor visible from the front. Uh, so, you know, it turns out all right, and that's going to be a chimney there. Um, you can see I just extended it. This house has a ridiculous amount of chimneys. It's kind of crazy. Um, I think there's five of them, and only four of them are actually uh, usable. Um, well, not usable, but they're actually functioning. Uh, the other one is just for show because I had a kind of a weird shape happening, uh, which you'll see. So I had to kind of improvise, and I put a little chimney there to kind of sort it out. So you'll see that. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of chimneys on this house. It's kind of crazy, but that's because there's a lot of fireplaces. I think there's four or five fireplaces in this house, which, you know, is because it gives it a cozy feel when, like, from inside. You know, if you have a bunch of fireplaces and stuff, just make sure your sims don't burn this house down because it's a pretty nice house. Uh, so yeah, here you can see there's this weird diagonal part uh, over here on the back of the house, which, um, now that I think about it, I don't know why I did that, but I did. And there's a weird diagonal part there, so the roof was the, the roof on this house was really hard. You can see I've like spent the past few minutes working on it, and it's kind of ridiculous. There's a lot of aspects to this roof, especially because of the multiple diagonal parts to this house. Um, and diagonal roofs don't work very well in The Sims. Um, it doesn't matter which game you play, The Sims 2, The Sims 3, The Sims 4, they're all pretty, um, well all of them have pretty annoying diagonal roofs. Um, they just are glitchy, and they don't fit well together with normal roofs. So, yeah, anyhow, it turned out well. It just took a long time for me to get the roofs just right, and you can see I'm almost done. Oh yeah, here's that weird area where the roof was protruding, so I just added a little chimney there, and that solved the problem. So, you know, chimneys are a good way to fix roofing problems, I've discovered. So there you go. Um, fun tip there, and here we're beginning on coloring the house, and we're like already seven or so, almost eight minutes in, and we're only just starting on putting some color on the house. Now you can see why this is a two-part house build. Um, well, it's good, you know, I mean, I took my time, and it turned out nicely, so. It's always, my houses always turn out horrible if I rush, so I told myself not to rush with this one, and it turned out pretty cool. Um, and also the screenshots at the end, you'll see the house covered in snow. Um, it's not like The Sims 4 with the snow mod where you can actually build in the snow. Like when you build in The Sims 3, the snow doesn't actually appear. Uh, but in the end, I have some of the screenshots in the snow, um, which just looks so cool in the snow. Like with the snow-covered roof and like the foggy windows and everything, it just really works well with this house. And here I, like, I do a lot of the house. I put a lot of the house in siding, and then I decide I don't like the blue color. So I change it to like a soft green, which you're going to see in a moment. Um, I make that decision. I'm not sure when it is, but it's pretty soon, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't like this blue color. So here we go, I'm changing it to green now. It's like almost the same color, but slightly different. It's like slightly more green than it was before, you can see. But I just like this color more, so here we go, I'm changing the whole house to a different color. So there you go, so now it's a soft kind of, I don't know what even color you'd call it. It's like it's like soft green, I guess. It's kind of like a mossy, kind of soft green. It's kind of a similar green color to Autumn Heights as well. I don't know, I guess I just like that color. And here I'm going to... Uh, I don't know what I was going to do here. Uh, yeah, I had some roofing issues, of course. Like, I don't have enough with this house. Um, but I had some more roofing issues. And it was with the A-frame part. Um, so, yeah, like, to get it so... Like, the wall roof walls aren't there, it's hard to describe. But, like, you can see the way that there's, like, no walls in front of the roof. Um, like you can kind of see the eaves inside there. Um, it was kind of messed up, so I just expanded the downstairs to, f to me just fix the problem. And that worked out pretty well. Anyhow, I'm putting some stone on the house, which is good because that gives it kind of a more winter vibe. Um, as I feel like stone just is like a more cozy material than brick. 
I don't know why, but I don't know. It just like I feel like stone goes better with this kind of house than wind than brick does. So um, I went with stone, um, which is interesting because like in The Sims 3, I use stone like on all my houses, and in The Sims 4, I end end up using brick a lot more than the stone. I think that's because there's like so few stone options in The Sims 4, but like way too many brick options. Like I don't know why they don't balance it out a bit better. I think Get Together has a few more stone uh, wallpapers, which is nice, but we could still use some more. Um, the Sims 3 has a plenty of stone variety, so um, I really love this stone that I'm using here, which is from Pets. I actually use a lot of stuff from Pets in this house. Um, but I also put some Pets stuff in this house, actually, like stuff for animals. Like I put in a dog bowl in the kitchen, and I put a few pet bowls around the house. Not bowls, beds. Put a few um, dog beds. I guess cats can sleep in them too. It was like no reason they can't, but you know, I put some uh, presumably dog beds and um, a dog bowl, you know, around the house. Uh, so if your Sims want to own a pet, you know, this house is already um, designed for that. So that's cool. Anyhow, here you can see I'm putting out um, or putting in some railings. I really love these railings I have here, which are from University Life. And I do, I love what I do here is I take. Um, these columns which are from pets and I put them on the bottom and then use some base game columns above that and I make them all stone and it looks like the supports for the house and it looks really cool. Um, I actually ended up getting rid of the stilted foundation that was there instead and just put some flooring and then use these columns to make it look like that's what's supporting the house and it turned out really well as you can see here. I do that um, in multiple places so I do that in the back of the house and also by the garage and you can see once you cover it in stone and everything it just looks really good and I end up getting rid of pretty much all the stilted foundations because I wasn't a huge fan of them so I ended up using just a lot of columns pretty much and it just looked really cool so I just kind of like doubled up the columns and you can see it turned out really well and I just love that look a lot more than the stilted foundations because they're kind of glitchy and when you combine a stilted foundation with a normal foundation it kind of removes the wall of the normal foundation for some reason which looks really weird, uh, so that's kind of unfortunate. But anyway, you can see I'm doing the same thing over here. Uh, the only problem I had is that the um, columns like didn't blend in well because they were too far down, so I ended up making them float, and then I put more underneath. So it's kind of a little trick there using a stream floor elevation. It's kind of raised up the ground, put the columns in, and then took out, like flattened the ground out lower again so the columns were floating and put some columns under those. So that kind of completed the look and it looks really cool I like I love the way that looks and you can see it in the front and also I'm gonna do it in the back in a moment too and it just th those supports just look so awesome it just it's the best thing ever um, and here you can see I'm finally softening out some of the ground and this is one thing that took a long time uh, mainly just because the house kept getting messed up as you can see here because I had to use constrained floor elevation because of the columns and the stairs too. Like once I put the stairs in, then I have to use constrained floor elevation because it doesn't let you edit the train around stairs and columns without the cheat. But when you use the cheat, the whole house gets messed up, so that's fun. Uh, anyway, here I'm putting in the front stairs. St I almost mispronounced that stairs. Um, putting in the front stairs. Yes, that's what I meant to say. Um, uh, yeah, so there they are, and I put a lot of rocks around them, which looks really cool. And, you know, it looks like there's rocks cascading down the hill around the stairs. Uh, although I don't know if the stairs are usable because the rocks are, like, against them. But I think, I mean, it looks like they are. This looks like the stairs can be used by Sims, so I'm assuming it's all fine. It's a few questionable things in this house uh, where I'm not sure if so certain items are usable or not. Um, but I'm too lazy to playtest it, so I guess if you encounter a problem, you can just, like, move or delete some object or something and it'll be fine. Um, you know, it's like I, I don't play The Sims that much anymore. I used to a lot, um, but you know, now it's like I don't really care that much. And frankly, if I like build a house and like some object is like in the way, I just delete it or just like move it somewhere else and it's fine. So if that happens to you with this house or any of my houses or anyone's house for that matter, it's not a huge deal. Um, anyhow, no, that's not too important. You can see I'm doing the floor plan here. And on the third floor, not the third floor, I'm sorry, the second floor, although if you count the basement as the first floor, then it is the third floor. Anyhow, the second floor, um, the bedrooms, the kids' bedrooms up there are really small and kind of weird shaped, but it's just kind of the way it turned out. Um, I mean, they're totally usable and they look kind of cool. I like the way that looks, actually. I like kind of weird shaped rooms because it kind of makes the house really unique and 
little eccentric and just more interesting, I guess. And here you can see I'm adding a bump out there for uh, one of the bedrooms, uh, so it's not microscopic, which is nice. And yeah, so just having to adjust the roof now, which is fun. So um, yay for that. Here's some roof adjustments happening. Uh, yeah, a lot of roof adjustments with this house. And the roof is a bit of a mess, but it doesn't look too bad, even though it's kind of messy. It's a little bit more messy than I would have liked. Um, like, there's a lot of roof segments all over the place going every which direction, but it's alright. I mean, like, it doesn't look too bad. Um, you know, it kind of, it flows in its own way, um, but it doesn't look quite as uniform as I would have liked. But I did my best. Anyhow, putting in some windows and just rotating the camera quite a bit. And now I'm putting in some more windows. Um, that's fun and exciting. And some more windows around this side as well in what's going to be the dining room. Uh, one floor plan quirk which you will especially see in the second part uh, when I actually get to most of the furnishing is the dining room is like across the house from the kitchen uh, and it's also pretty far from the living room. So yeah, the dining room is a little bit isolated uh, which is kind of a flaw but there really was no better place for the dining room closer to the kitchen just because of the way I laid it out. So it's a little inconvenient, but it's all right. I put it like a dining area in the kitchen too. Uh, so it turns out all right. I mean, I guess your Sims could just eat in the kitchen if they want to. And the formal dining room could be for very formal occasions. Although one thing I noticed with the Sims, and I think it's mostly pre prevalent in the Sims 3, they might have improved it a bit more in the Sims 4, but it's like Sims always just don't like to eat together. I mean, like you make a dinner and then like, you serve it and like you have like a sim call the whole household over and, like they'll all eat in like different places like one will eat at the bar stool um at the island or one will eat at the dining table and like well they'll like eat at different times it's like you can never just have like a proper family dinner in the sims at least i've never been able to do that i guess if you orchestrate it well enough uh you can get it to work properly um i don't know it's just kind of annoying so you know you might as well just put a little table in the kitchen and that kind of just solves everything uh, anyway, I think I finished the windows while I was going on that tangent, and as you can see here, um, I'm going to do the same thing with the back porch as I did with the uh, front balconies and such. So I'm going to be putting the, uh, I removed the stilted foundations, and I'm going to be putting the um, columns in. So it looks really cool, uh, obviously, and really neato. So I'm doing that here. I had to get some walls in there to support it up, and then it all got messed up with constrained floor elevation, of course. What do you expect? And there you go. So, um, and also by put a trellis up as well. So that's neat. Uh, so you got a little trellis happening there. Uh, if you want to be really fancy, you could use move objects and put some plants up there. Although I didn't do that uh, because I was imagining this house is kind of like a winter themed house. So I didn't really want to put too many plants like on the roof, like on trellises and stuff. Like there's a lot of plants in the landscape, uh, but I just didn't feel that was necessary. Um, anyway, there you go. Beautiful little. Uh, back porch there and there's another porch over here uh, this is the only one that actually ends up using stilted foundation um, a stilted foundation because it was just gonna be too much of a bother to put in the other kinds of um, columns and stuff so I didn't bother with it and there's the door that leads out of what's going to be the home gym uh, so you'll see that in part two when I go and furnish the inside uh, so yeah and yeah you know, that's the back door and oh here we go putting in the driveway the beginnings of landscaping are happening right now. It's exciting. Um, you can see there's the driveway and a tree, and I'm looking for another one. That's not it. And there's the other tree. Beautiful. Actually, there's a lot more than just two trees. Uh, I'm putting in a bunch more, actually. And yeah, so a lot of trees. Um, I love the landscaping in this house. It just turns out really nicely, especially with the rocks by the front door um, where the stairs are. You'll see it just turns out so nicely. I don't know, this house just, it's, it's, I love this house, it's so nice. Um, yeah, so here you can see I'm putting in the rocks um, and they kind of like cascade down that hill around by the driveway and you can see I'm putting them up, going up the hill uh, near there and I'm putting some ferns in there and putting some more rocks in. I just hope those stairs are usable uh, even though there's like some rocks because like at one point the stair just like disappeared. I didn't record myself fixing it but one of the stairs like disappeared under a bunch of terrain and I had to like put it back and like redo the rocks although you didn't see that because I did it off camera but um, I don't know like that was a weird glitch and I hopefully it doesn't happen again it didn't happen to me again but you never know anyway um, there I just touched up the driveway I think or I haven't done that yet have I I don't know um, I put in a little pathway though that um, leads to the driveway and I'm putting in a bunch of bushes and rocks and stuff here 
Um, and that's just the beginning. There's so many bushes and stuff in this house. Not in the house, around the house, I guess. You don't have landscaping in the house unless it's like a really eco-conscious thing that has plants growing inside or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, a bunch of trees here happening here. Um, and I just almost, I once again, almost mispronounced it, but then I just saved it right at the last second there. Um, yeah, so there's some trees happening there. Um, not happening, they're placed there. And here's some more rocks I'm putting in over on the other side of uh, the driveway. So it's kind of like... You know, rocks cascading down the hill leading to the driveway. I'm pretty pleased with it. It turned out pretty nicely, if you ask me. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's the rocks around the front done. And we're going to most definitely continue with a lot more landscaping. Um, yep, here we go. There's some more bushes. And I also love the heather I have on the ground. It's kind of got that purple color to it. it looks pretty neat. And, yeah, putting some more trees. I love these juniper trees because they kind of, you know, they have that winter vibe to them because, you know, when it snows out, they don't lose their leaves or something. Uh, not or something, that's what happens, they don't lose their leaves. And uh, there's a really nice spruce tree there in the back, which is from Supernatural. Um, I love some of the plants from Supernatural. Like, all these bushes I'm using, the kind of light green ones, the large light green bushes are from Supernatural. And I, like, I use them in all of my Sims 3 houses because they're so fantastic. Um, I don't know why, they're just, like, really good. And they don't look spooky or anything, they just look good. So that's fun. Um, and yeah, so putting in a bunch more stuff, some more bushes, some more rocks, some more heather, you know, all that good stuff. Some more rocks back here, so he's going to do the same kind of thing I did around the front uh, with some rocks and stuff, and it looks pretty good. I'm really happy with it. You know, it's it's a random landscape. It's just, you know, kind of uh, thrown all over the place, but uh, it looks really good. I'm putting in some terrain paint here, of course, as I always do, and just going to put that around the place and make it look all nice. And yeah, actually, we're, near, we're nearing the end of this part, actually. Well, not exactly. I mean, there's a few more minutes left, but um, yeah. So this part is basically just the structure of the house and the landscaping. I do do a tiny bit of furnishing. Um, I think I do the entrance to the house, and then it's going to be part two from here. And you can enjoy watching me furnish the rest of the house in part two. Uh, I believe part two is probably a bit longer than this part because... It usually takes me longer to furnish than it does to build, although this house did take me quite a while to build. Like, it, 25 or actually like 26 minutes of building is a lot longer than usual because like I can usually build a whole house in a 26 minute house build, you know, sped up 700%. So, yeah, this one was a little long, but it's, I don't know. I think it just in general, Sims 3 um, house builds take longer than Sims 4 ones because the creative style takes forever. Because, uh, like, the colors in The Sims 3 of objects normally are horrible. So, like, at least The Sims 4 has some decent colors to work with. Like, you know, like, in The Sims 4, if there was creative style, like, you don't need to use it because the colors are already pretty decent. But, like, the default colors for objects in The Sims 3 are so horrible that, like, you just feel compelled that you need to use creative style. And also, because nothing matches at all, like, you really, like, you know, it's just, like, a thing. I have to, like, make everything in a room match to some extent. So I end up using creative style all the time, and that takes a lot of time, um, a lot of extra time. Now you can also see I put a giant chandelier in the living room because it does have that two-story ceiling, uh, so that's pretty cool. And it's also a balcony that overlooks the living room from the second floor landing, which I think is really neat. I love houses like that, that kind of have that balcony that you can look over, like down to a living space or like a main room. I don't know, I just think it's so cool. I just, that's one of my little favorite things of houses that I like to do. Anyhow, this is the entranceway, and this is the only room I furnish in the house in this part, and um, I went with this really rustic stone flooring, which I actually use throughout a lot of this house. I use it in the kitchen and in some of the bathrooms, um, and in the garage too, I believe, so it looks really cool. I really love it, and um, yeah, it just like gives the house kind of a cozy slash rustic vibe. Um, I don't know if I call it rustic, but it's kind of like an older-fashioned an older fashioned and more old fashioned style uh, inside than it is outside, but you know, I, I just like this house a lot. It's kind of unique, kind of has some funky shaped rooms around the place, especially upstairs on the second floor, but you know, that's kind of what makes it unique. And yeah, so you can see I have the flooring in place and I'm putting in some wallpapering. Um, so got like that nice greenish color happening, and yeah, so I only use that kind of in the entrance area. And a little rug there by the door, which I actually like that door. I think it's from Barnacle Bay, uh, which is kind of an obscure world thing that I don't think most people have. 
uh, although it's pretty cool. I like that door. It's kind of got a nautical feel to it, although it doesn't... Well, in context, it has a nautical feel. It's not really in a nautical context in this house, so it doesn't, like, make you think, oh, wow, that thing belongs on a boat or anything, but, you know, it... Whatever. You get my idea. It looks cool in this house. Anyway, we're almost done with this part. Um, I'm just going to wrap up this entrance, and then it's going to be on to part two. So I really hope that you check out part two, because I put a lot of effort into building this house and making this video, so I hope you really enjoy it. And, yeah. And the furnishing part is really awesome as well. The living room and kitchen turn out really nicely, as well as some of the bedrooms. So it's a really nice house, and I hope that you are interested in seeing how it turns out. Uh, anyway, I'm just wrapping up the entrance here. i uh, got a couple of chairs, and I'm putting in a coffee table, uh, which is an interesting combination. It's like a modern coffee table, but I kind of put some colors on it, so it worked out pretty well. And yeah, so anyway, we're almost done here. Uh, I'm just going to add the final touches, some lighting, and uh, moving the rug around, whatever other stuff I'm doing. Do do do. Oh, adding, doubling the light, doubling the lights. Adding a second light is the correct term. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Hope you check out part two. I hope to see you in part two, and yes, have a great day, everyone. Bye.